Jesus and the joy of living. That's the theme we're going to learn more tonight. And it's so interesting because <clears throat> in one of Jesus' passages in the book we have already studied, Good News, Jesus talks to one of his disciples saying about the joy of serving friends and being amongst friends. Nazareno Feitosa, I consider him a friend from a long time. It's the first time we meet in person, but spiritually we've been connected because since I used to live in Baltimore, right? We talked thanks to the internet and uh, he is one of the few brave spiritists who come from Brazil and volunteer to give their lectures in English. What do we do with Nazareno for the gift <laughs> he's going to concede to us? It's not trivial, is it? How do we feel? Awesome, Nelisa said, joyful, great, it's exciting, right? No matter if we're Brazilians, if we're non-Brazilians, Americans, Filipino, etc., etc., we love it. Thank you, because we know the majority are still discarnated, and they love even more. <laughs> and the good spirits too. It's a major <laughs> thing for us, and we con congratulate you for the courage. And we say the courage because we know many people are afraid of it. But I think when uh, you really feel the joy of being with Jesus, you always have the courage. And But living in our world today, coming from Brazil and visiting, giving a tour in the United States, Nazareno also works. For those who don't know him, he is a public servant, we would say in English. He works in Brasilia, in the Brazilian area. He's from the northeast of Brazil, the beautiful Fortaleza, for those who know, right? And his wife, Fernanda, they live in Brasilia. And uh, he has done, his background is very diverse, but in spiritism, he has been really reaching out at all ends, coordinating systematic studies in spiritism, which is so vital. Without studying, we cannot really progress in the understanding of the spiritist science. And he serves in different locations. He is often on the road helping and assisting in his free time, vacation, weekends, evenings, and his wife is always there together, supportive from what I understand. So we are really joyful and reverent to that much effort because we know it's not trivial. It's a choice he made to share, to serve, and also to be here with us, especially in this most critical month of October. We are the only center in the state of Virginia this far, and our capital is growing in its spiritist efforts. We are a few weeks away from a major election that shall define the course of events not only for the United States but for the planet Earth as a whole. So we would say that this evening is very, very um, crucial to give a hand to the good spirits who are making a lot of effort so we all on in this nation consciously make a healthy choice for the collective and there is nothing better that's why we picked this thing to ask him to talk to us about it because we need to know more about our guiding model and his theme which is the joy of living he's our guide 
our model and he sung the song of joy of living what is it because if we keep that in mind from now to election from election to immortality we will be certainly one with jesus and god so let us welcome nazareno who is going to lead us into this understanding but remember it's about feeling and thinking reasoning together Nazarene, we are ready for you. My dear friends, it's a great honor for me and a great pleasure to meet you today. And uh, especially here for the first time in the Spirit Society of Virginia. And to meet such a lovely friends. Uh, to meet personally Vanessa Anceloni, Carlos as well, uh, Luciana, Daisy, uh, to know, to the, tonight I met uh, Vanessa's mother, uh, Sayla, uh, and the, the little Virginia as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the pleasure to meet uh, Paula, who made some cookies for me and for Fernanda. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and to meet Carol, Carol and Mark, because they are going to, to ride us to Baltimore. We're going to meet Daniel Santos as well. So we want to thank all of you. I want to thank Deborah Beldovix uh, from New Jersey. She has scheduled all these lectures and helped us to, to meet such dedicated and lovely friends. Okay? Uh, tonight we're going to speak about Jesus and the joy of living, as Vanessa has told us. And uh, we're going to begin with a message. It's by the spiritual Emmanuel, psychographed by Chico Savior. Chico Savior, is it? Let's say. Chico Savior. And uh, it's on the book uh, Roteiro in Portuguese. I, I guess it's not translated yet. Not yet. Eu também não sei como é roteiro em inglês. Roadmap. Roadmap. So let's go. Joy and the Gospel. Whoever affirms finding in the gospel's religion sorrow and bitterness commits great injustice. Undeniably, the sacerdotalism we at the past and in the past lives commits uh, has many times impregnated with dark clouds the Christian horizon, with certain forms of stereo worship. However, Christianity, in its essence, is profound revelation of heavenly joy amongst earthly shadows. The coming of the Messiah is preceded by the visitation of the angels. Mary, joyful, converses with a divine messenger, clarifying the celestial ambassador's arrival. Jesus is born in a humble manger, which is spotted by the bright light of an unexpected star. Pastoral peasants are called by a spiritual emissary, suddenly materializing in front of them, declaring himself the messenger of great joyful news to all the people. In the same stance, crystal-like voices sing songs in heaven, praising the Creator and exalting peace and goodwill among men. As we don't know how was this crystal-like voices, we're going to hear. You're going to hear Celtic woman, and they are going to sing to us, Jesus, the joy, joy of man's desire, written by Johann Sebastian Bach. Celtic woman, Jesus, Jesus, Jesu, joy of men desire. Because the good music help us to to achieve harmony, peace, and joy, isn't it?
And while they sing, we go back to the message. Contentment and hope start reigning. Later, the master begins his ministry at a wedding fest, marking the family's joy, the wedding of Cana. As if sensing limitation and narrowness in any temple of stone to his word in the world, the Lord begins his preaching by the lake in few nature's sanctuary. Flowers and birds, light and scent, represent the frame of his message. Crowds hear his shooting voice, soothing voice. The sick and the lame are deeply touched by his consolations. The poor and afflicted glimpse new horizons in the future. Women and children accompany him cheerfully. The Samo of the Mount is the anthem of the Beatitudes, suppressing grief and despair, through which, through which the Divine Friend establishes contagious joy. The message of Jesus is of joy, hope, isn't it? In the open field, he multiplied bread for the hungry. The treatment given by the Master to the sufferers, who were considered useless or worthless, creates new standards of trust in the world. The good news apostolate unfolds under the climate of perfect joy. Its creator that are touched by the counseling gospel begins to contemplate the world and life through a different angle. The earth becomes a blessed school of spiritual preparation with satisfying service for everyone. Each patient who is renewed to good health is vehicle for happy cheer for the whole community. Each sufferer who is morally comforted becomes edification for the immense crowd. Madeleine magnifies the love and becomes eternal beauty reborn. And Lazarus rises from the grave, life resurges, triumphant and immortal. And yet, the bloody sweat tears of the cross, the Lord makes the fountain of life flow victoriously for the whole world, with the sun of the resurrection holding in the humanity, holding its spiritual growth towards the endless centuries. Joy in the Gospel by Emmanuel, psychographed by Chico Savia. Celtic woman, Jesus, joy of man's desire. So, now it's easy to speak about this theme, isn't it? <laughs> and what do you think? Is joy a virtue or a flaw? Joy is a virtue? What do you think? You are speaking so uh, low. I, I, I can't disguise if it's a, a incarnate or a discarnate. <laughs> well, is it a virtue or a flaw? A virtue, isn't it? Yes. But do you remember that in the medieval ages, uh, there was uh, some times that smiling was considered a devil's thing? So many monks, very grave, very serious, isn't it? Uh, like if smiling was not something good, it's not something uh, uh, saint. And in the, in the other hand, we see that the word gospel in Greek, which is evangelion, what does it mean? Good news. Good news. So Jesus Christ comes from the spiritual realm and brings us the good news. We read it, but I guess we didn't understand it correctly because we still so much sorrow, so much sad, so much depressive, anguished. That's why he told us, if you do love me, follow my commandments, and I will ask my Father to send you another counselor, the Spirit of Truth, of the Saint Spirit, that is going to remember you everything that I used to say, and is going to teach you even more. So, we believe that Spiritism Doctrine is the con promised Consular by Jesus. 
because it helps us to understand his message and we're going to see today how is joyful this message okay how joyful this message is and the researchers used to say, ah, just one, one thing more. Uh, Jesus compares his stay on earth as a wedding party. When the Pharisees ask if their disciples do not feast, feast or fast? Yes. Feast, fast? Feast, <laughs> feast, you know, fast, feast, 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 ah. <laughs> then, then he, he answered, how can they fast? If, you had, if they are in the presence of the groom in a wedding party. See? And who knows what means the word blessed that it, we can see in the Sermon of the Mount. In Greek, the best translation is not blessed. It is happy. It is correct, blessed as well. But in Portuguese, some Bibles now bring the translation happy. So Jesus came to speak to us about happiness. Happiness, happy, are the humble in heart. Because the kingdom of, ah, I have here, blessed are the poor in spirit, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Happy are the which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fulfilled. Happy are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And so on. So Jesus came to speak to us about happiness. Well, look at this. Who knew this already? Raise your hand, please. Just one person, you see. All, a lot of words of the Bible, of the Gospel especially, we translated in a different way, we interpreted in the way that we wanted. But the, the, many, the, the sense uh, many times are not the same, okay, are not, are not, are not is that one. And researchers used to say that sadness may help us to develop a lot of diseases. So the people that are, are more op optimistic, they have more health, they are more healthier than people are pessimist, okay. So it's not good to, to develop sadness. And as I said, in the Spirit's books, what does it say about that? At the question 719, Allan Kardec asks us, these superior spirits, is, is, blamable, is it blamable a man to seek after the comforts and enjoyments of corporeal life? And the spirits answer, the desire of corporeal well-being is natural to man. God only prohibits excess, because excess is inimical to preservation. He has not made it a crime to seek after enjoyment, if the enjoyment may be not acquired at another's expense. And if it be right of a nature to awaken either your moral or your physical strength. And as I, know, I understood this first part, but this uh, moral and physical strength, I didn't get it. What, what does it mean? Uh, what, what people like me who came from Ceará, Ceará is a state in Brazil, we are Cearense, what we, do we do like to eat? Do you know what we do like to eat? Uh, tapioca, tapioca, <laughs> see? Coconut water, cashew nuts, jacket beef, uh, carne de sol, huh? uh, fl farinha flour, flour, uh, rapadura can, can, Candy, can of sugar candy, and uh, and buchada de bode, como é? Goats, goats stomach, <laughs> cook it. Uh, uh, and which is the the mob, mobile, uh, mobile, mobile, uh, like a foreign tour, but mobile that uh, we have to see in every Cearense, like me, house. It's uh, which is mobile is this? It's the hammock, isn't it? The hammock, so can if the Cearense stay all day long just eating all that stuff <laughs> and swinging at the hammock, is it going to uh, develop it spiritually? No. Where well, it's going to 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 get bigger, the belly and the lazinessness, isn't it? <laughs> then the, that that excessive uh, well-being is not okay. But 
seeking after the good wealth, the well-being, it's, it's okay, it's a natural desire, it's not a problem, it's okay? And the Gospel according to Spiritus, what does it say? Is that the chapter 17, be perfect? There's a, a message, the title is, The Individual and the World. Look what the Superior Spirits order us. It, this is our order. Be cheerful and happy, but of the cheerfulness provided by a clear conscience and the happiness of the hairs of heaven, counting the days that will draw the near to the inheritance. Look, it's not so. Every spiritist shall be cheerful, shall be joyful, because that's what the spirits tell us to do. Okay? It's in a protective spirit. He didn't sign his name. And why are we here? What is the purpose of human life on Earth? Uh, there are many questions that answer this, but at the question 558, Allan Kardec asks us, do spirits have any other duty besides their own personal improvement? And the answer is, they conquer in the harmony of the universe and act as ministers in fulfilling God's will. Spirit life is a continuous occupation, but it's not at our arduous like that on the earth, that of earth, because it's not subject to bodily fatigue or the anguish of need. So the spirits tell us that we are, they're going to become ministers of God one day, now we're just workers, and uh, we need to improve our uh, 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 the personal improvement is, the, is one of the, the, the meanings of life. It's very important because we suffer a lot, because we have a compulsion to change the others. And we cannot change people. We can only change ourselves just a little, isn't it? And it's very hard. And then we want to change our husband, our wife, and our children. We suffer a lot. And the, the young ladies, when they marry us, the guys, they say, when we get married, uh, then I'll put him online. I'll put him on the rail, isn't it? The rail track. i put him on the track. Just wait. After we get married, we, are sh we shall do this. And uh, after we get married, we, the husband, we don't get better. They, 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 we don't change. We just get worse, isn't it? <laughs> and on the other hand, the young guys like me, we marry the young ladies. Uh, 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 asking them for the, do not change, and they do change. <laughs> so nobody satisfied. You see, we suffer a lot because of this. We need to remember that our mission is to the personal improvement. We're going to help. We're going to explain. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, do charity as well. But we cannot change people. Okay. <laughs> And sadness. Sadness is dissatisfaction, inadequacy. It may be the result of beliefs, that wrong beliefs, not knowing how to deal with the losses. Perfectionism, that is, is a son, is a child of pride, frustration, not acceptance of reality, lack of motivation, hopelessness, impatience, compulsion to control others, and through repetition, it becomes an uh, hypnotic process, like a self-obsession. So even, even, it is even worse than the spiritual obsession because we ourselves, we spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week just nutrishing all these feelings, all these emotions, and it's very bad. It's like we've been praying 24 hours a day in the wrong sense, in the, the opposite way, you know? So we need to change our minds. And uh, what is the main cause of humans' moral imperfections? In the book, The Genesis, chapter 3, item 10, Alan Kardec teaches that if one studies all the passions, even all vices, one sees that they have their origin in the instinct of self-preservation. Alan Kardec didn't uh, go very deep in this subject. The book of is, 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 is from the year 1868. He passes away 1869. But my mentor, my, my mentor, he asked, Nazareno, which are the, the self-preservation instincts? Oh, we have the hungerness, the turginess, we have the, the sleep, the sexual instinct, we have the mother's maternal instinct, we have the fear. Fear is useful for us, but if we, if we take a look deeply, the fear can lead us to a lot of uh, uh, moral imperfections. 
because we ha we f are afraid of the future, then we retain goods, money, treasures, then we develop the selfishness, the greed. And uh, what is jealous? Jealous is not love, jealous is a problem of self-esteem, and then we fear losing the lovely person, lovely person, person. Uh, the psychologists, they say that the second worst, the second greatest uh, fear of humankind is the fear of being rejected by the fathers, by the parents. We, we, have, we, want, we want very much to be loved. We are very afraid of being rejected. And as our parents normally like people that are very well succeeded in money, in financial way, they, we are going to develop even more selfishness, the uh, cobiça, como é cobiça? Greed, uh, ambição desmedida, ambition, uh, craziness. You're going to get mad for the money, you're going to rob, you're going to corrupt, you're going to uh, do not pay taxes because we want to get the money, because we want to have the applause of our family, of the society. We, we fear a lot being rejected. So, is it, that is vanity as well. It's not, vanity is not uh, the person that worries about uh, uh, how she looks, but it's true, the person that is very afraid of what the people think. And then, a lot of things like envy, that, love, that beautiful, gorgeous women that we have, uh, the top models, the actors of Hollywood, they are such beautiful, they have wonderful hairs, uh, marvelous, eyes, a uh, contagious smile, they are tall, they are uh, uh, elegant, they are rich, they are talentous, they are, uh, and, and, and to kill us, they are extremely thin, isn't it? <laughs> and, we, and we get so, to, why? And then to compensate the envy, we use the mallet sense. Uh, you know that, that person, she's using drugs, you know, Divaldo, Divaldo has this problem, has this, you know, trying to make them get down so we can rise up. But uh, many other things, I don't have time enough to speak about uh, fear, but uh, uh, Geraldo Campetti Sobrinho, it is a vice president of Spiritu, uh, Brazilian Spiritus Federation, He's, he has a book that uh, how to speak uh, in public without uh, uh, disincarnating of fear. <laughs> and he has a chapter only about fear. And, and if you remember in the book Nosso Lar, uh, the spirits, uh, Astral City, uh, the spirits tell Andrea Luis when the Second World War is running, starting in the world, say, Andrea Luis, now we're going to study about the fear. And one day, the humanity is going to understand the importance of studying this. There's a lot of things about, a lot of things. What is anxiety? What is anxiety? Anxiety isn't the, f the fear of the future. We are so concerned about that. And we forget that in the question 258 of the Spirit's book, Alan Kardec asks if the spirits before reincarnation, do they see, do they choose the principal gender of trials and trials they are going to face here on earth? And they say that yes. And that is their free will in the spiritual realm. So we have chosen the majority of the trials that we're going to face here. And as we know that God is perfect, is the supreme intelligence of the universe. It's sovereignly just and sovereignly good. Nobody is more just and, not, uh, and is not uh, kind as our Father. Nobody is. And he's perfect. So we are not going to go through anything that is not good for us. Everything that we go through is for our well-being, for our development, spiritual development as well. So we don't need to, to worry. Remember that even Jesus has told us about this spiritual schedule, this spiritual program. He said, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God? Some translations say, uh, don't, uh, to, don't we buy uh, two sparrows for one, one dollar? And no one of them falls to the ground without God's permission. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, 
ye are more value than many sparrows. And in my case, it's easier to count the number, do the, the hairs, isn't it? All the hairs are numbered. There is this, uh, a spiritual program. We do not show fear the future, okay? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting scared, so it's, it's to talk so much about fear, but I'm getting panicked already. <laughs> what is the best solution for the fear? Pray help, helps, but it's not pray. Faith. The faith is mother of a lot of virtues, say the gospel according to his virtues. Nazareno, I understood perfectly. The problem is that my faith is uh, menor, smaller than a seed of mustard, mustard seed. I want to have a great affair because I want to be, I want, I, I want to, to struggle my selfishness. I don't want to develop greed and a, a craziness, ambition, and uh, jealous. I don't want to develop selfishness, uh, envy, maledicence. I don't want to be shy, to be coward. We have been coward, uh, omissed, omissed, and many other things, anxious. How do we improve our faith? With the knowledge. That's why Jesus has told us, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's okay? That's why it's so important we study this spiritual doctrine, because you need to know where we are from, who you are, where you're going, how, what are you supposed to do here on earth, and the self knowledge that the spirits tell us that it's the best way for the man to improve himself and, and develop himself and to resist to evil temptation. So it's very important. That's why every spirit center has studies. Which is the day of the, your study here? A Monday. Besides the lectures, you have study in groups like Alan Kardec has asked to do. Right? The, the serious, uh, permanent, uh, uh, serious study of the spirituals and doctrine is very important for. So we increase our faith, and we found a strong faith, like Alan Kardec used to say, it, unshakable faith is that one that can face reason in every time, in every epoch of humankind, isn't it? So we need to improve so we can struggle, fear, and to, uh, to, to, to don't be such a, uh, with that, because fear is one of the causes of the many moral imperfections, as we say, okay? Uh, this is, this is, okay, we cannot speak about every topic because of the time, but this is the satisfaction is useful to progress, says the spirit Joana de Angelis by Divaldo Franco. Because adaption leads to inertia, accommodation, inactivity, immobility. And the question 921, uh, can, we, can we achieve completely happiness here? Well, but let's see what the spirits told Allan Kardec. Kardec asks us, we can understand that people will be happy on earth when humanity as a whole is finally transformed. But meanwhile, is it possible for anyone to enjoy relative happiness? The answer is, most of the time, people are the artisans of their own unhappiness. If they would practice the law of God, they would spare themselves many misfortunes and enjoy a state of happiness that is as great as the existence on such a dense plane we will allow. So, we know that in this time, it, as Earth is a trial and expiation world, we cannot be completely happy. No, nobody is happy on Earth. But we need to try to be as happy as possible, okay? So we know right now that Earth is like an academy school. We have problems to help us to develop ourselves. We always have problems. But since this day on, we're not going to say anymore the word problem. Because spirit is we don't have crisis, we don't have difficulties, we don't have problems. We have evolutive challenges. <laughs> it's much more optimistic, isn't it? So we need to just to change the world because it's true. No, now we don't say anything about our husband or our wife or mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. No. 
we say we, we say in a different way we say uh, my friend you don't know the how the 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 evolutive challenge, the big evolutive challenge that I have in my home in this reincarnation. <laughs> I shall be a very noble spirit, so God uh, uh, commit me a mission so important like this, you know. <laughs> Will we uh, uh, stop being victim and assume the paper of, uh, as the script of a protagonist, isn't it? Because it's in the, the gospel according to spirituals. The, Weak spirits, they are instruments to help us to develop ourselves. Look at this, they are like a personal trainers for us, yes. They help us to develop love, forgiveness, patience, renounce, joy, faith. They help us to come here, wasn't it? I was brought by a lot of them, isn't it? So it's important to see that. And the joy is, is the result of the achievements, of the challenges and victories. If we did not have any ch challenges, we would not uh, experiment uh, joy. No. And uh, what is the best way to keep the evil spirits off? Well, well in the Medium's book, the chapter 23, which is the, the obsession of mediums, uh, Allan Kardec is going to tell us that it's very important. In the medium books, at the question, to the item 252, it is said that the person's moral imperfections give rise to the action of obsessing spirits, and the best way for a person to get rid of them is to attract the presence of, of good spirits by practicing goodness. So, when we do the charity, when we come to here to improve ourselves, we are, well, uh, the good spirits come with us, they are among us, and they help to keep off, to keep away the weak spirits. So it's very good to practice the goodness. And now we have so many more reasons to be happy, isn't it, sure? isn't it right? At the past, so many wars. Now we have some wars, but we have much more civilization. Drugs, now we have irrigation, cold, snow. Now we have fire, we have heating, we have appropriate clothes. Uh, fierce you animals in the forests. In the forests, now you have pets. It's very good to have a pet, to have a, a little dog, a, a cat, isn't it? It's very good for health, for depression, for the heart. And before darkness, now so much more energy, light. Disease, now we have so many medical treatments. We have the antibiotics, we have the vaccines, we have the uh, medication to depression, to high cholesterol, to high blood pressure. We have a, a, a lot of diabetes, we have a lot of medical treatments, and we have the anesthesia as well. Right? We don't have to, to suffer such much, much pain that we used to suffer at the past. Uh, the past, too much nostalgia, loneliness. Now we have such a wonderful way, me, me, me just, ways of communications. And less slavery, now we have so much more freedom. Sadness, now we have music, we have poetry, we have literature, we have movies, even spiritual movies. <laughs> it's good to, to help the spirits move so we can spread, we can disseminate this doctrine everywhere into everybody, isn't it? Uh, Sad, uh, I said that sorry. ignorance now we have so much science, some so much knowledge, and at the past, longing for Jesus. Now we know the promised consular by Jesus Christ. We believe the spirituals is the promised consular, and it's very important that we understand that the good that we do change the karma that we have. Alan Kardec never used the word karma. In the spirit's book, he had always uh, preferred to use law and cause and of, of law, law of cause and effect. Okay, let's see just very quickly this the message that is very important by its spiritual manu. I want to thank all the friends that helped me with translation, but many of them in, in a very quick time. The, this one is, was is Daniel from Baltimore. He did this just right this afternoon because the person who was uh, could, couldn't do this. And then look at this. Uh, he he studies the, uh, the letter, second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 6. The sour who works ought to be the first to enjoy, enjoy the fruits. 
Besides Anna Manuel, tell us Bryce Chico Xavier, through Chico Xavier, besides the salary earned from the work, it is invariably necessary to be followed by the respective spiritual remuneration from which we highlight some of the most significant items. The work turns on the light of experience, teaches to know the difficulties and problems of others, promotes self-education, develops creative, creativity and the notion of the time value, immunizes against the dangers of the adventure and the boredom, establishes our steam in in, area, in our area of action, expand our understanding, amplify our field of affective relationships, we join new friends, attract sympathy and collaboration, extinguish little by little our inferior tendencies which are still bringing from the past existence, existences. When the work, however, transforms itself in pleasure to serve, oops, now it's different, is not only the work, but the, where, did you see the smile of Vanessa when she was here? <laughs> did you see the smile of Daisy as well? <laughs> Many others, they, they're not just working as volunteers, they do with pleasure of serving. It's very, it's very important. This is the charity that covers the multitude of sins. It's very important to have this. Amongst important aspect of spiritual remuneration emerges. Every time the divine justice looks after us at the correct address to execute the sentences that we, according to the laws of cause and effect, till it against us and it finds us at the service of our neighbors, the divine mercy commands that the execution be suspended indefinitely. And in the course, when obligatory connection with the mechanism of earthly justice occurs, that is when the influence of all those to whom perhaps we had provided some benefits comes in our aid, because our neighborhoods become the natural attorneys of our cause, either easing the penalties in which are incurred or removing them as a whole if we already had showered in love what we had honored in order of suffering, so for our own satisfaction and tranquility. So we can change all our karma, everything, if we do the work with pleasure of surfing. Let us reflect on it, on it and conclude that to work and serve in any stance will be always a constant support to us and the promotion to a better life. In Portuguese, it's, it's spiritual remuneration, remuneração espiritual, by the Spirit of Manu, in the book uh, Perante Jesus, Before Jesus. Okay? And I want to uh, thank uh, other friends as well. Uh, a friend and his her, her husband and Priscilla Teixeira from Orlando that helped me with the translation uh, always uh, helping uh, as volunteers okay and what does the spiritualist doctrine promote in our lives I want you to read at least three books Alan Kardec has wrote around uh, 29 books including the spiritual spiritualist magazine that you have the honor uh, to 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 continue and uh, I want you to read at least 10%, only 10% of the books he, he wrote, isn't it? He, he organized uh, this first book, The Gospel According to Spirituals, and the, the Medium's Book. If you don't read and study these three books, we don't know Spirituals Doctrine. It's very important to understand that. And now, Nazareno, but I guess that to achieve the joy of la living, I need to satisfy my, my wishes, my desires. But the desires, they have consequence, isn't it? We normally, we, uh, uh, we like to eat a lot, isn't it? But there's a problem, because it, we get fat, isn't it? The cholesterol gets higher, so the diabetes, so it's not good. Uh, Nazareno, I like to sleep, but we lose the treasure of time. Né? Many spirits have told Chico Xavier, Chico Xavier, they said the worst repenting. They were regretted because they didn't 
take the chance here. They lost time here, lost the opportunities here on Earth. It's very important to work. Nazarena, I would like the spirits do everything for me, but this is, <laughs> it was very easy. I, I, I came here as a meter and then spirits connect and then they did the lecture. But this is a trials world. It's a, it's, it's a test world. And if the spirits, they do my test, what is going to be my evaluation? Zero, isn't it? Yeah. And the salary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they won't do what we, are, what we are supposed to do. They're going to inspire ourselves. They're going to help. But we need to do, because we need to develop ourselves. That's our meaning. I would like to, 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 to get wealth. I would like to be rich. I was going to be very happy if I was rich if I, if I won on the lottery. You know, well, the spirits tell us that if the richness is fruit of a honest labor, as labor is a divine law, it's okay. If it's an inheritance, it's okay. But the spirits tell us that richness is a proof even harder than the proof of poorness, of the mis of mis misery, po poverty, poverty, yes. It's even worse because it's the supreme exciting of our selfishness and our pride, the worst uh, vices that we have. Huh? So we, it's a hard trial. We may fail. You're going to fear, uh, you're going to be afraid of canary picking. We're going to uh, destroy our children's education, giving them everything they don't need. And when we die, when we pass away, we're going to watch our family disputing the inheritance. So richness is going to bring us comfort, but it's not going to give us joy of living. Ah, Nazarene, I would like, I like to seduct. I would like to find my twin soul. I would like to be like Casanova, like a Don Juan, to be gorgeous as well. And instead of finding our twin souls, what do we find? We find hand cliffs, isn't it? Hand cuffs, hand cuffs. Yes, in Brazil it's alma gema and algema. <laughs> and the, yes, the affective lesions that uh, a man tells, there is a, one, one, a, a huge problem. Uh, many crimes that we commit, being re unresponsible with the other's feelings. It's very important to understand that. Man, a lot of ob spiritual obsessions are provoked by uh, relationships. Uh, Nazareth, but when I retire, I'm going to be happy. Do you know what, what happens when we retire? Depression. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I work at, in Brazilians' retirement and people get depressed. And uh, as you are not busy, people will ask you to do small jobs. You're going to do, as you are here, stop it, uh, 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 available, go get the children at the school. Uh, as you are doing nothing, go to the, <laughs> the, 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 the market, <laughs> to go to, to the to pharmacy, drugstore as well. You, we become, como é mordomo em inglês? You become the butler of the family. <laughs> so it's, it's going to have more time to help in the spirit center, but it's not going to bring us joy of living. Eh? Nazareno, which, what, which uh, some tips you should uh, tell us to, to a joyful life? Well, first love, like Jesus has told us, né? love our God above all everything, of all your heart, all your spirit, all your energy, gratitude. We learn how to, uh, learn to, to think everything good that happened to us. And, everything, and the evil that does not happen to us many times because of the interference of the good spirits. We came here by car. We could have an accident at the, at the world, isn't it? Many times it didn't happen. These good spirits helped us and we even don't know. And Chico Xavier used to say that we should thank for the bad things that happen to us as well. Because the bad things, in the matter of fact, they are good things. But only in the future we're going to understand this. Wow. So we shall be grateful 
forever, okay? It's very good for happiness. And spiritualism that is going to explain the gospel of Jesus and to the, the, the most marvelous philosophy that we can understand who we are and we, we're going to, we're going to come from and we're going to, isn't it? And this is a, 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 a a comparison is not a critic, critic, but uh, just a comparison to show how the spiritualism doctrine is it's uh, is in, is in front of many others. How is according to gospel of Jesus? Okay, before we used to believe in vengeful gods, like in Greek mythology, uh, that God punishes man. And now Jesus has told us that God is is like a father. And God loves. We know that God is perfect. His uh, unique uh, God is, is is eternal. His sovereignly just and fair. Many other things. I want to show you just one part of this message. The message is is to think. It's pensar in Portuguese by André Luiz. At the book Respostas da Vida, Answers of Life. It's not translated yet, I guess. Look at what André Luiz tells us. God is love, and God doesn't punish. The Creator herself nutrishes guilt and imposes herself corrections because has distortion and perception about God. I'm going to say in Portuguese just to be more uh, <coughs> straight to you, okay? Deus é amor e não castiga ninguém. A própria criatura é que se culpa e se corrige ante os falsos conceitos que alimente com relação a Deus. So, as we program our reincarnation, many times we condemn ourselves to many sorrows. There is in the gospel, according to spirituals, the voluntary sufferings. There are sufferings that are they're not obligation. They are voluntary. We choose to go through them. Look, huh? because we don't understand how merciful is our Heavenly Father. So in the, in the past, uh, doctrines like original sin, no. I mean, we know, as Jesus has told us, to each one according to his deeds. Guilt and our responsibility, eternal punishment. Now we know that love, the, the charity covers a multitude of sins. Before we used to do blood sacrifices of children, of animals, eh, people. And now Jesus tells us, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Promises and bargaining with the gods. Now we know there is a law of love. Uh, charity and justice and uh, everything is going to be according to the needs and the merit uh, before uh, the asceticism the asceticism the enclosure you need to live in the monasteries in the high mountains the cold mountains now the spirits tell us in the gospel according to spirituals live as men live in your time wow imposed celibacy and now sexual responsibility, isn't it? Sexuality with love and so. Uh, before the mediums, we were considered uh, witches, uh, mad, we were to tor tortured, we were uh, sacrificed, we were burned alive like we burned jo Joanne of Arc, wasn't it? And now we have the spiritualism doctrine brought dignity to mediumship, wasn't it? Now we can be workers, isn't right? Uh, blind obedience now, freedom to be, the, follow the reason as well. Fast now, temperance, <laughs> a restriction for some foods we could not eat. Uh, I can say, restraint. <laughs> I'm pointing in the wrong place. Uh, 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 we could not eat uh, meat of some kind of animals. Uh, now, no. The spirit's books tell us the food according to the constitution of the body. Uh, necessity of confession. Now we know that God's law is in our conscience. So it's very important to keep our conscience clear in peace. Otherwise, we, we may suffer because of these this guilty feelings, isn't it, right? Now you have seen this before.
Before we would believe in an exorable karma, wasn't it? We have just saw that message, spiritual remuneration, that, that, that charity covers a multitude of sins, and because she loved us so much, her sins were forgiven. God, uh, Jesus has told us. Before there were, there were forbidden questions, now we, we have the free thinking. There are not even anymore the lib index librorum prohibitorum. No, now we can read anything. But it's good to know the good books, to know what is according and what is different than what Alan Kardec's teaches, isn't it? Um, before forbidden clothes, even those days we have forbidden clothes, the book and many others, isn't it? Now we shall dress properly. Uh, uh, mandatory title. Now we have the voluntary contribution, but it's good to remember that in the uh, book of, of mediums, at uh, the chapter 30, 30, there's a, there's a, a model of uh, organization for the spirit societies brought by Alan Kardec, and they teach us that every one of us uh, they sh should help uh, the, the spirit society with money, all, all of us, not only the, the directors, but the people that, 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 that used to be in the spirit society as well. It's good. We need to. We need to the money to help, help the dissemination of spiritualism, helping keeping the air conditioning, the light, isn't it? We, have a, we can do a lot, such more with money if everybody helps. Uh, before mysteries, now we have logical and rational answers. Um, now, uh, before we, we, I, would I used to suffer very much with, because of this. Because people used to say, in Nazarene, watch out, because much will be required from everyone to whom much has been given. And when I remembered every book, spiritist book that I have read, and that I'm doing not even 1% that what the good spirits tell us to do, then I just say, wow, I am, I am in trouble, <laughs> isn't it? And I was, uh, then I went to understand what was this. Who said this, this, this statement? Jesus. It's, it's important to know who said and, and around in, in a context. Contest. Contest? Contest. Uh, to understand, then, it, it, is, it is supposed that Jesus has said this. But we're going to see that Jesus has two different kinds of speeches. When he used to speak to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, he was very energetic. How to you, Pharisees and teachers of the law? You're hypocrites. Uh, he used to say that. Uh, I mean, strong things with them. But when he was going to speak to the repented, to the humble, he was always very generous. With the adulterous women, women, what does he say? After everybody goes away, he asks, "Lady, young uh, woman, where are all of those all of those that were accusing you? They are gone, sir. Then I do not condemn you as well. Go, and do not sin anymore." See, Jesus did not told her a sermon, didn't uh, pull her ears, no. He was very generous. So when he says, much will be required from everyone to whom much has been given, who was he talking to? Probably to a Pharisee, to a teacher of the law, wasn't it? But Alan Kardec, at the gospel according to spiritualism, gave the best interpre interpretation to this. He said, much will be asked of spirituals because they have received much. On the other hand, to those who have taken every advantage of their learning, much will be given. Look at this. Because it's written, Peter asks Jesus and he says, Peter, you are going to receive a hundred plus more, everything that you have renounced here on earth, since now and in the spiritual realm, hundred times more. And he talks us about the rewards, about the wonderful happiness that are, that are waiting for us. 
And we, when we need to understand that there's a reward, a lot of them. For you, especially in America, you are my heroes. Yes. Every worker here in the United States is like uh, 1,000 workers, spiritual workers in Brazil. It's true. You make the difference. Help the spirit societies, okay? It's very good. It's like a family, isn't it? It's very good. Privilege fulfilled now, meritocracy. Salvation with no effort. Now I know there's a, a law of, of evolution to each one according to his deeds. And I just want to show you one thing. Where, where did I put this? Oh, I forgot. But, but it's very good to understand that, hap that the salvation and the spiritualism is very, is very easy, isn't it? Do you remember? How can we... It's not translated, I'm so sorry. But the, the gospel according to spiritualism, there's an item. What does, need, uh, what does uh, the man need to do to be saved? And then he brings that passage that Jesus tells us that going to, to put away the goats and the sheep. And he asks only for one criteria. There is only one criteria to separate the goats from the sheep. Or we understand that are the spirits, the goats are the spirits, the evil spirits, they're, they're going to be allowed to reincarnate on earth anymore. And then the, the, the earth is going to become a world of regener regeneration, where only the more or less good spirits are going to reincarnate, to be. Then it's going to be. So is this the separation? Is the salvation? that we understand in spirituals. And which is the only criteria, do you remember? Charity. Charity. Because I was hungry and you gave me to eat, something to eat. I was thirst and you gave me something to drink. I was homeless, I was an immigrant and you invited me in. I was naked and you dressed me up. I was sick and you came to visit me. I was in jail and you came to visit me as well. So Jesus asked only for charity. That's why we say that out of charity there's no salvation. Salvation. We don't need to be spiritists. We don't need to, to be baptized. We don't need to accept Jesus. We need to do what he asks. Even a materialist, even somebody who doesn't believe in God, that do what he asks is achieving the salvation. It's doing what Jesus has asked, isn't it? But we may remember as well that the question 886, uh, Alan Kardec asks us, what is this, the real sense, what is the sense of the word charity as Jesus underst understood? Then he said, benevolence to everybody. Indulgence. Indulgence is clemens, clemens, clemencia, uh, pity, yeah, clemency, mercy. With uh, the uh, everybody, uh, the others imperfections, and forgiveness of the sins, forgiveness of the, uh, every offenses, isn't it? So this is is charity as well. Many others like the charity of disseminating the spiritual doctrine, isn't it? Yes. There's. Uh, do you know where is where is? No, I'm not going to say this. This is <laughs> there's no there's no time enough for this. Let's go for our slides back, and then. Um, before ugliness was something very bad. When we, are, we were ugly, we used to be very sad. Now we know that ugliness may be protection, spiritual protection. Like in a spiritual armor, says the spirit Emmanuel by Chico Savior. It, it, to this, take a look. Uh, uh, many spirits, when they come to earth, it's in the book Missionaries of Light, they ask us to come with some kind of, of disease, some kind of uh, handicapped or not being beautiful to protect themselves. Remember, uh, Mother, Mother Therese of Calcutta, Calcutta, was she beautiful, gorgeous? No. In Mandulce, in, in Brazil, in Bahia, not, not beautiful as well. Chico Savia was a gorgeous man? No, Chico wasn't. Francis of Assisi, they say that he was very, very ugly. <laughs> it's true. And uh, if they were gorgeous, it could be a, a danger for, for the mission, wasn't it? Because everybody was going to be f fall in love, so it's not going to be good. <laughs> then, then you know when you come in this life, when you're ugly, you are protected like me from Sierra with this huge head. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> uh, now we are protected. I love this spiritual doctrine. Isn't it? It's wonderful. Everything that was bad, now it becomes good. <laughs> Isn't it? The pain is a friendly master. Uh, employment, we have a, a volunteer work. Suffering is an opportunity to wake up. It's like an alarm. Uh, disease, Andrea Luis tell us in the book, uh, I forgot the, the name in, in, in English, uh, that disease is like a drain, an energetic drain that is going to put out all the disharmonies that we carry in our spiritual body. He tells us in another book that uh, the body, the physical body, is like an. Como é carvão em inglês? Char? Charcoal. Yes, it's like a mellow charcoal, like a sponge like a filter that is going to uh, drain, is going to absorb all the imperfection, all the disharmonies that we bring in our spiritual body. Look at this. That's why not everybody gets cured through the pastors, to the churches, to the mediums, because many times the disease, the illness, is our right treatment as well, is our purification. Because this is a, a world of purification. It's a, expiation means purification, okay? There are many other things I don't have time to tell you. I want to, to show you one other thing. Well, Nazareno, uh, before the suicide, the people were eternal con con uh, suffering. Now you know there is not. Before. Uh, Getting old was something very bad. The the, the uh, velhice, uh, being being elder was something bad. Now we know that we are not under the the the, the sting of self-preservation such strong. We don't have the hormones that make us do a lot of bad things when we are young. <laughs> we have, we have we are more we are more wise, we have more wisdom, we are the attachment, the, the, the passage for the eternal life is so much more easy when you get old, when you get sick, it's very, it's not bad, it's good for us. And death is, is freedom, is a passport to the real life. We are closer to meet our spiritual family. We are closer to be, to be they, they are so much good. That they are even better than our, than our uh, material family. And uh, we are close to become children as Virginia again. It's so good to be children, isn't it? Seven years only, quitting and having taking, being cared by mommy and having receiving love. So it's very good. Uh, death is not something bad for us. Nazareno, I love spiritualism, but I, I, I am afraid of something that they call it umbrao. What do you think about umbrao? Do, are you afraid of going to umbrao? Let me get the, the slide here. Uh, it's not here. I have it this on Portuguese. It's not translated. Uh, are you afraid of going to umbrao? No? Are you conformed already that you're going? <laughs> Sometimes that's what happens. Uh, umbrao is like we just, uh, is like the lower zones, uh, the spiritual zones. It's like purgatory because in spirituals we don't have eternal hell. And then um, if we do go to umbrao, but it's, uh, there's a there was a speaker in Fortaleza, Frederico Menezes, that he he took away our fear of going to umbrao, to go into the purgatory. Uh, because it's a state of mind, but there's some spiritual religions, regions like the earth is a, is a kind of brow as well. And then they said, people don't be afraid. And so why not? Because in the umbrow, you're going to meet everybody there. <laughs> Even the spirit center people are going to be there. <laughs> Daisy, are you here? Yes, I'm here. What's the problem? <laughs> Vanessa, I'm here too, what's the problem? <laughs> and that person, that, that very difficult person, going to say, ah, you, I am sh I was sure that you were coming here, yeah, I was sure. That's why I told my wife, Fernanda, I told Fernanda, when I pass away, please put a, put a tag, very big. Como é que ela achar? Um cartaz, um sag, um sag, um tag, very big, written worker. 
<laughs> so when I came to Umbrau, the people asked Nazarene, but you, you were uh, an past na Sobral the speaker, no? an international speaker. But Sobral is a city from Sierra. And, uh, and, and you are here in Umbrau? And I said, yes, I am, but I'm here to work, at work. <laughs> And I came to, to do lectures in Umbral. We're going to do systematic, systematic <laughs> studies in spiritualism. We, we have open registrations. The registrations are open. We're going to do gospel according to spirit, uh, the, the, the gospel at home in Umbral. Now, uh, bloom wherever you are, as Divaldo used to say. Yes. So am I going to be crying over there? No, no, I'm going to work. Because the spirits tell us that we are already in Umbrau because Earth is like a, a species of purgatory. It's, it's a kind of purgatory the spirits tell us as in the, 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 the book, The Heaven, Heaven Hell, and, and the, or The just, Divine Justice According to Spirituals. And, um, and, and the word purgatory comes from the word, word purga, which means purify. And God is, is the supreme intelligence of the universe, sovereignly just and good. If we are in Umbral, it's for our own good. It's good for us. Keep it in mind. So my spiritual mentor, he said, Nazareno, Umbral is like a spiritual, uh, it's the spiritus spa. Do you know what is spa? <laughs> that place that we pay to, to be hungry, isn't it? <laughs> the people wake up very early in the morning. Mr. Nazareno, wake up. I think they put us to, to work out, to do swimming, um, uh, working out, gym, go to the gym, uh, hydrogenastics, and so on. And when it comes to, to the lunchtime, what is on our dish? The only vegetables, isn't it? Salads, vegetables, and um, uh, many others. It's like a forest, and you are looking for. You find something very, very little uh, to to uh, to eat, and then you. Uh, the, the solution is to to be eating all this, those vegetables, the salads, and so on. Then you think, no, but then you remember, then oh, there shall be a dessert. <laughs> Do you know which is the dessert in 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 spa? Diet Jello. <laughs> <laughs> is, pa, is a good or a bad thing? It's a wonderful thing. We be on shape, we, it's good for self-esteem, we sleep better. It's very good for depression. For high blood pressure, it's very good for cholesterol, for uh, diabetes, for everything, for osteoporosis. Ev everything becomes better if you do work the side, if you do workout. Okay? And uh, uh, then he told me, Nazarene, Umbral is, is, is like the spa of the spirits, because we there, we're going to lose the extra kilos of the materialism, of the attachment, of the selfishness. We're going to go out from there and going to be very, so much better. And I asked, but Samuel, uh, isn't there any way that we do not need to go through this <laughs> spiritist spa? Is a spiritual spa and said there is yes yes you just need to do a diet here on earth a diet yes you shall use the food of the souls which is the food of the souls it's on the chapter 18 of the book uh Lach, spiritual uh, Astral city which is love Love is the food for the source. And the charity, it, it is its manifest, manifest, manifestation. So if we nutrish love, if we do the charity, we do not need go to Umbral. It's not true that everybody goes there. It's not true. In the book, Nosula, Dona Laura, the mother of Lysias, she says that she, when she passes away, she goes straight to Umbral, to, to Nosula. She didn't pass through Umbral. Uh, Bezerra de Menezes, Irmão Jacó, in, at the book Voltei, né? I came back. They said, they were, it's not true. If you go there, it will be at work, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that book says that every person who works in Umbral receives the salary in double. Uh -huh. Yes, the bonus hour. That the remuneration, spiritual remuneration, is in double, and we are supposed to have a, a, a strong uh, uh, meal, isn't it? Yes, different food. I want to work at this <laughs> this place as well. 
And so we shall not be uh, uh, afraid of that. Chico Xavier, when Chico Xavier, one day he said that he wanted to go to heaven, but to have heaven in Portuguese is céu, this three little letters céu, and then he said he said that to to his friends, and the, some lady said, oh Chico, when you go to heaven to céu, please remember us, do not forget about us, okay? Please remember us, please help us. And then he smiled and said, I think you didn't understand me very well. The heaven, the cell that I that I want to say, it is is just a an, an abbreviation. It means. Centro Espírita Umbralino. <laughs> Spirit Center in Umbral. I want to be in Umbral helping my friends, to my everybody who's there. My friend in Umbral, there's a lot of mothers trying to help the children, and we cannot see them because we are in the synchrony, different and different synchrony. There are a lot of superior spirits. The Minister Clarencio of Nosso Lar, he works on number. He rescues uh, Andrea Luis. So he does, shall not be afraid of this because everything is f for the good all of all of us. Okay? There's, there were some more things to say. Look at the joy of Francis of Assisi and Claire. Claire. The joy of Chico Savior. Look at this. This is a special team. Were in one of the greatest uh, uh, um, uh, physical effects, medium of Brazil, of cures and, and physical effects, and look at the love of Chico Xavier. Some biographers say that uh, the, the greatest characters of Chico Xavier was not the hum humility, 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 but the joy of living. Look at how this, this uh, doctrine do to us. And to end, can I take more five minutes maybe? Okay, this Jerome Medonsa, the giant of the renounce and the joy. Uh, Jerome, Jerome Medonsa, do you know his story? Uh, he was known uh, af after as the lying, the laying giant. Because he, he was very very healthy boy. He was tall, he was strong, and that times we used to have the movies of Tazan, the king of apes. And he loved movies. He was strong, he was tall, he was healthy. Then after the movies he went to the restroom in the front of the mirror. Then he said that says, Hey Tazan. He took himself as Tazan. <laughs> and one day for his happiness his happiness he became a spiritist. And uh, in a medium, mediumship, uh, medium, uh, re, uh, re meeting, one spirit said, I bring a message for someone who claims to be Tarzan. <laughs> My friend, hold on in the green vine of faith and hope because you are entering the forest of suffering. He prepares himself. And some months later, he's going to watch that movie, Gone of the Wind, for hours of, of, of Lent. And then he's going to, to play jokes. And later, they're going to say, the wind took even my legs. Because he's going to develop a kind of disease that he gets. Uh, he goes to the muletas? Crouchers. The later to the wheelchair and to a bed, he was completely paralyzed for the rest of his life. One of the eyes gets sick and has to be extracted. Six months later, the other eye as well, and he becomes completely blind and paralyzed. Do you know what does this man used to do? He didn't cry, he didn't complain. He, he, he was always bringing a, a joy to everyone playing jokes, recitating uh, poems, uh, singing, and he started to do lectures. He used to travel all Brazil, giving lectures as well. And uh, one day he went to a TV show and the reporter asked us, Mr. Geronimo, if you could do something, to ask something 
uh, to God, to you, not to your children. He uh, founded three spirit centers and a shelter for uh, 300 uh, poor children. And then he asked, what is happiness to you, Mr. Geronimo? Then he said, my friend, happiness for me would be to be able to turn my body in the bed this way, but I can't do this. <coughs> a lady that was watching the TV called and said, tonight I was going to commit suicide, but after what this man said, I cannot do this anymore. And he was medium. He was friend of Chico Savia. He knew why he was going through all of this expiation. And uh, he had insomnia. He couldn't sleep. And they adapted a telephone to his face. And he used to spend all night long uh, talking to the depressive people, to people that wanted to commit suicide. And he was talking about the joy of living, the joy of the gospel of Jesus, and the spiritual doctrine that bring us so much consolation and hope, hope bringing in all this message for us. He had, we have very uh, interesting stories about Jerome. One day he came to the Spirit Center to do a lecture, and the president said, Jerome, it's better we, we shall we show cancel, cancel the, 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 the lecture. And why? Because I forgot to tell you that the, the, lecture is, the auditorium is in the second floor. And the only way out, the up, is uh, a spiral staircase. And if you take your bed uh, to the stairs, you, we're going to, to swing, and you may slip and fall to the ground. It may get hurt. We shall better cancel it. And said, no, I came here to do the lecture. But Jerome is dangerous. And he was blind, but he's going to say, I would not want even see <laughs> and do the lecture. One day later, he's going, he, he went to the movies. He couldn't see, but he could hear. He loved the movies, and he loved to be with his friends. My friend, it's so good to have friends, to be here, united like you are. It's so good. And then he was in the movies when the young lady came late and didn't see. It was, it, the, sh the, the movie has already begun, begin, and uh, she didn't see his bed because it was dark. Then she came, uh, uh, followed, and uh, rise, raised up very upset. She said, oh, but it's, not a, it's an absurd. And everywhere that I go, there is this handicapped man, is, it, it is. If I go to the sax again, then he is. If I go to that air, and even here in the movies, that's an absurd. <laughs> and what his answer was? Yes, young lady, but you don't stop at home, is it? <laughs> you never stop at home. <laughs> uh, look what this spiritual doctrine can do to all of us. Bring joy to a man like this. With 50 years, John Mendoza fulfilled his mission. And he is going to appear to Divaldo Franco because, because Divaldo can see as a medium, he has clairvoyance, clavo clairvoyance. And then uh, he appeared to Divaldo, completely health, and standing up, and who's going to play jokes, even. The Divaldo, the lion giant, the giant is standing up now. And do you want to know something, Divaldo? I was much more better than you in lectures. <laughs> yes, you know, yes, that's true, because many times after your lectures, people used to to applause you in a standing ovation. Yes, it's true, many times I saw this. But I was even better. Because after my lectures, I was carried by the, by the, by the crowd. <laughs> As he was in a bed, he had to be carried né? By, the, by the shoulders. <laughs> so my friends, look, because this doctrine right, remembers, like Jesus has asked, isn't written, oh, I'm sorry, Isn't written, ye are gods. It's in Psalms 82, you are gods. All of you are children of, of our Heavenly Father. You, in Jesus, tell us, you are able to do everything that I do and more, if you will. You are the, you are the salt of earth, the ferment of the bread, the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise 
your Father in heaven. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Vanessa asked me to do the to help you with the spiritual passes today. Is it right? Want not me to do this? Yes, I'm going to put a, a, a prayer by Chico Savior, and we're going to take this moment to to receive the spiritual passes because the good spirits are certainly here with us and are going to to help all of us. Okay, you may find this at YouTube as well. It's a, a wonderful. Uh, pray. The, there are the subtitles in English, so you may keep your eyes open. This video was shown uh, in, to pay homage to Chico Savia on the first Congress of Medicine and Spirituality in Washington, here in the United States. I don't know who, who translated this, it's a wonderful video. Dim the light, please. Pedro Leopoldo, a small city in Brazil, in April 2, 1910, reborn Chico Savior. A poor man in a family of 15 children, and he with his work one day in close to the river. He meets a man, his spiritual mentor, who is going to guide him with security in his mission to be the greatest disseminator of the spiritualism doctrine in all over the world. That's why Brazil, my friends, is the greatest spiritualist nation of, of the world. Chico Savior brought to us 485 psychograph books by automatic writing brought to us thousands of letters of the children who had passed away bringing them to their moms they were crying being a true apostle of the gospel of Jesus among us the charity love and now he's going to to tell us the Lord's seventh prayer by Emmanuel in his own voice. You may keep your eye open because of the